All right, welcome back, everybody. You're watching Street Smart on Bloomberg. Here's maybe a sign that things are getting better. The world's largest auction house, Christie's International, says global art sales are up over last year. Ah, but will it continue? Joining us right now to paint a picture of the all important fall auction season is the CEO of Christie's International. He's Ed Dolman. Ed, good to have you back with us. Great, it's good to be here. So things are up over last year, so not a bad start to the year. Do you think it's going to continue through the fall season? Well, it looks the signs are pretty good right now. We're 46% up you know, year to date on last year, which is extraordinary, and the recovery has been much quicker um, than we'd predicted. Are you surprised and by that? I am. You know, we thought sales were going to remain pretty flat into 2010, but the, you know, the sharp recovery in prices, especially at the top end of the market, has really been extraordinary, actually. Um, and that has inspired a greater level of consignments for the end of the year because mm. people now feel that they can sell into a stronger market. We're still way off the, the highs, though, that we saw at the top of the market, the stock market, that is, back mm. in 2007. Do you think we get back there? What do you think it takes for us to get back to those, those Well, I think levels? we're going to get that back there quite quickly, actually, because the, I mean, the problem hasn't been the pricing levels in our market because mm. we've seen world records set, you know, for in 2010, very big prices paid. It's actually been volumes of sales, and we're slowly seeing those volumes of sales recovering. And I'm sure if we get another season of strong sales in November here in New York, we'll see the volumes right back up. You mentioned record sales. Let's, let's remind everybody, you guys sold a, Pica a Picasso for, what, 106 million, more than $106 million. Yeah. Yeah. Were you, you mentioned, so here we're seeing records in, in 2010. Was that surprising to you, to see a record made in this year, when there's still questions about the economic outlook and so on and so forth? It wasn't surprising. I mean, we thought the work would set a new world record for any work of art at auction, which is exactly what it did, right. because it was a 1932 Picasso, thought to be one of the more important works from that particular year by an artist that's now seen to be the greatest artist of the 20th century. And so we thought it would make a world record. Um, what's been more surprising is just how strong uh, some other prices have been for mm. sculpture in particular. Sculpture, which used to be seen as a slightly sort of secondary area uh, right. of collecting from flat art, you know, has really led prices all year. And we've seen prices paid for Giacometti and Matisse and others, which are really extraordinary. Also actually. over $100 million, right? I mean, what That's is right. this? Is it is it more important to you to see those record prices when measuring the health of the art market than total uh, volume? Of, of I wouldn't say sold. it's more important, but it helps like hell. That's what I would say. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's been very good. I mean, the, the, it's the top end of the market where we're really seeing ex extreme price growth, driven by Chinese collectors, Russian collectors, Middle Eastern collectors. What do you see in other parts of the market? In. I mean, if that's the top end, what do you see in the, in the middle area of the market? Or well, I mean, the, the, the good news for us has been the strength of what we call the day sales of, in post-war and contemporary art, which was an area where you know, people think it's slightly more affordable, depending on your wallet. But I mean, we sell objects for anywhere between sort of five thousand dollars and three or four hundred thousand dollars, sometimes a million dollars in that category. Mm. And we thought that might be an area of weakness. But in but they have, we've seen real resilience and strength with lots of collectors coming into that area of the market this year. You've got buyers obviously from all around the world. I'm curious about the European buyers mm. and those European buyers potentially uh, connected to the financial community. Um, again, Ireland today, some news out of Europe, so that worried the market a little bit about the outlook there. What kind of buying are you seeing among the European buyers? Well, Europe remains pretty strong. And, um, really? It, it really does, because I think what we're seeing across our business is art seeing as some sort of store of value that's a little bit different from holding other assets. And I do now think that people look at art, but especially wait. when there's as much uncertainty elsewhere. But yeah. they're down. They're definitely... As measured by our palettes here. Correct. You can see, yeah. uh, the, the, well, that's the first half of 2010, right? And everything else is a full year. So. Yeah. So you would see if you doubled up that figure to right. get to a full year, you'd see growth so year on year, and we'd be up closing in on... You um, mentioned, though, uh, wealthy Chinese buyers coming in and paying big prices. Yep. Is that uh, the biggest growth segment in the market as far as buyers are concerned? Yeah, Asia by some markets? way. Some way. The impact of Chinese buying in our sales is really significant now. Um, and we saw a buyer from Asia pay you know, over £30 million for a major picture in our sales in London in June, which is an extraordinary um, result for what us. What about buyers out of the Middle East? What kind of activity are you seeing there? Well, I mean, it's good, good activity because I think the you may know that they are 
uh, developing museums and are trying to drive cultural tourism right. into that area of the world. And we are, and the market generally is benefiting from that as they look to acquire great works of art to, to, to fill their museums. Which areas of art are doing the best? I always am shocked that people want to pay more for a painting on a canvas than for a Ferrari, but you still get record <laughs> prices for cars as well. Yeah. Which are the healthiest uh, areas? Sculpture, painting, I mean... Well, I think we're still looking at this incredible taste change towards modernism and post-war and contemporary art in particular. And I think the contemporary market for pictures, sculpture, mm. Jeff Koons, Damien Hirst, others have been remarkably resilient, I think. We, just a few seconds left. What's everybody looking forward to for the fall season? If you can give us a couple of highlights. Well, we've got this extraordinary estate of Dennis Hopper. So the, the, oh, the, the link between Dennis Hopper, right. who was an artist as well as being a photographer, an actor, right. who also knew Andy Warhol, and we've got a, we've got a portrait of Dennis Hopper by Andy Warhol in the Great. in the set. And when we see sort of links like that, it's it's quite exciting in the business. Um, so we've got some great things coming up for sale. We've got some wonderful works by Roy Lichtenstein, mm -hmm. and one in particular we hope is going to make forty million dollars plus. So we've got some good things coming up. Sounds wonderful. Hey, listen, thanks. We'll have to check in with you once uh, the season is uh, done. See how, see how it went. Ed Dolman of Christie's, everybody. Everybody.